school board meeting to order. Ms. Callahan, will you please take roll call? Uh, do I have a motion on the adoption of the agenda? Mr. Chair, I motion that the school board adopt the agenda as written. Second. There's been a motion and a second that, that the school board adopt the agenda as written. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Motion passes. And I have seen somebody come in who will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> Would you please lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance this evening? Thank also you so deck. much. Thank you very much. We are now going to have a special presentation uh, from the Liberty High School Choir and Orchestra, oh, from the uh, choir, excuse me. Uh, Christina Shepard is the Liberty High School Choir and Orchestra instructor, and she will lead us in that. And I think we are invited to come, come sit front they to take over the front here. Thank you so much for having us. My name is Christina Shepard and I am the new choir and orchestra director at Liberty High School this year. And this is one of our three choral ensembles or uh, choirs that we have at the school this year. This is our vocal ensemble, which as you can see is our all female ensemble. And the, our next piece that we're gonna do for you is actually just a little snippet um, to kind of entice you to come to our winter concert this Thursday um, to enjoy the performances from our orchestra program, our choir program, and our band program to get you into the holiday spirit. So this is actually a Shakespearean text, Blow, Blow Thou Winter Wind. It will be done with piano on Thursday, but these ladies are awesome enough that we can do it a cappella for you now. Thy truth is not so 
you so much. We hope to see you guys on Thursday. We are going to close out with hopefully a little bit of audience participation with We Wish You a Merry Christmas as we bring you in. Sorry. 6.30 p.m. Thank you so much. Thursday, totally free admission. Uh, plenty of seats for you. Thursday, 6.30, uh, Liberty High School Auditorium. Thanks so much. This is We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Please feel free to join us. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, is the, all right, I did not RSVP. I'm letting you know now I would be there. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to attend this, okay, if okay. nobody else can be there. All right, Thursday? No, 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 uh, the one for Wednesday. Oh, the one for Wednesday, okay. Yeah. Um, we will now have Ms. Akers uh, introduce somebody who will explain the government intern program and the students who uh, will share their experiences. Yeah, so good evening. The students are going to join me and I'll introduce them as they come down. Um, just a little bit about the program if you're not familiar with it. Um, we started it a couple years ago with one intern. We doubled it and have doubled it again essentially. You guys can come down. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Patterson is our supervisor for our interns. He's a teacher at Liberty High School but he also monitors our interns at Kettle Run, Fauquier and at Liberty. Tonight with us we have um, interns from Kettle Run and Fauquier and they're going to tell you a little bit about their placements and um, what they do there. And just a little bit about the process, um, we essentially have tried to um, make partnerships with local government and we've had student interns at the Board of Supervisors and at uh, John Marshall Soil and um, at environmental services that are this where our interns are from tonight and we really have every year grown our placements this year for the first time we have an intern over at the department of gis which we think is really important um, so we're excited to say that it continues to grow and expand and of course our biggest advertisement for how well the program is and, the, and how meaningful it is is to hear the students what they're doing and how they like it and of course you're welcome to come see the full program of their presentations wednesday night um, back here at seven o'clock and each of the interns do a presentation on their projects that they've had all semester. So I'm going to turn it over to the interns. And first up is uh, Garrett Moore from Kettle Run. Hi, my name is Garrett Moore. I'm at Kettle Run, and I was at the Board of Supervisors. Uh, the main reason I signed up for this was because I was really interested in learning about our local government, because I felt like that's what impacted my life the most. <coughs> and I can tell you, over my time, I learned so much more than I thought I would not just about our government, but I learned people skills. I was constantly in communication with multiple different types of people every day. I had to help them with their problems. I learned just a lot of workplace readiness skills. I spent a lot of time on the computer doing stuff, just tracking information, 
learned a lot about organization. Um, I, I don't have any bad things to say about my experience. I loved every single day I looked forward to leaving after third block and going over there and spending an hour and a half to two hours there. And I, that was my favorite part of the school day, personally. That's what it's all about. Yeah. <coughs> um, my name's Catherine Bolter, and I was at the Don Marshall Soil and Water Conservation District. And um, I d got to go out in the field a lot with them and help survey and do spot checks on land, which was my favorite part. And I'm really interested in conservation sciences, so that was another big thing that made me do it. And I had a lot of um, senior friends last year who did the internship at the airport, and somebody was at the Board of Supervisors, and they loved it. And so um, that's one of the reasons that I did it. Good. <coughs> Hi there. <laughs> Most of you know me anyways, but <laughs> my name is Steven Starner, and I'm from Fauquier High School, and my placement was the Department of Environmental Services. And the thing that I looked forward to most there was getting a hands-on experience and seeing how much stuff goes on behind the scenes of something that you just see. Like they had a the first phase of a tr big transfer project going on, and it was just amazing to me to see how much goes on behind the scenes there. And just overall, I just love the program. Like Garrett said, it was the best part of my day probably, just being there and being able to be with those people that were at the department. I would just thank you for that opportunity. So thank you for the time tonight. And of course, and just um, echo what the students say. Thank you for your continued support of the program. And of course, we also thank um, the County Board of Supervisors and um, County Administrator Paul McCullough for their continued support that allows this to happen. We know it's unique. We know it's unique that they leave. But again and again, our students tell us how valuable the experience is to them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We'll attend Wednesday night the, the, the presentations oh, that they're going to have. You're coming. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there Wednesday night to represent the board. Okay. Good. All right, we will move on to announcements. Um, everybody will be glad to hear that there will be no more no chairman's night or school board work session in December. Oh. So you don't have to show up on the 26th. <laughs> uh, yeah. board organizational meeting is tentatively scheduled for Tuesday, January 3rd at 6 p.m. in the school administration conference room, but that may change. More than likely. More than likely. Yeah. The school health advisory committee will meet on Wednesday, January 4th at 8 a.m. in the central complex building conference room. Uh, we do need to make sure that's open for them. I, I assume it is, but I need to check on that. The Fauquier Excellence in Education Foundation meeting will be held Thursday, January 5th at 4.30 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a Special Education Advisory Committee meeting Thursday, January 5th at 5.30 p.m. in the Central Complex Building A Conference Room. The Finance Committee will meet Monday, January 9th at 5 p.m. in the Fauquier High School Library. And the next regular school board meeting will be on Monday, January 9th right here in the Falcon Room at 7 p.m. <coughs> Any additions or changes? Okay. Um, at this time, uh, we will have citizens' time. Community involvement is an important component of a successful school division, and the school board welcomes public input. Thank you. There will be no dialogue during citizens' time. However, ideas and concerns brought to the board this evening may be referred to the appropriate administrators for future information research and response when needed. Please be respectful of all speakers and limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, when I call your name, please step to the podium and state your name and magisterial district, please. Uh, we have one person signed up, Megan Fay. Hello. Hi, my name is Megan Fay. This is my fourth year of speaking at Citizens Time to advocate getting seat belts on school buses. In the past, I've brought signatures of over 100 different Fauquier families who advocate getting seat belts on school buses. I don't feel it may have done much good. Last year, I brought my star witness, who is one of my coworkers who had been injured as a teenager on a Fauquier County school bus. A lot of these accidents aren't recorded. 
Um, I was very excited to hear back from an email from Mr. Gorg, who was inquiring last year about different questions about getting seat belts on school buses. Um, I've cornered Scott Lingenfelter in my driveway before talking about the subject of getting seat belts on school buses, and he, uh, one year or two years ago, did introduce the topic to the, the state legislature. I'm a physician assistant. I used to work in the ER for 10 years. I've helped out with injuries, people who've been injured on school bus accidents, and there's no system between the ER and recording these injuries to the government. My husband's a police officer. The police have helped with school bus accidents. Um, and in Fauquier County, there, you may have known, there's a, a school bus rollover in 2007. It had a little short excerpt from the paper, um, but kids got hurt on that. Um, accidents can happen, that's why they call them accidents. You can have the best school dress, bus drivers in the world, but people have medical emergencies, other cars run into school buses, and then um, also sometimes there are weather-related conditions. My brother's an attorney, and I had asked him to help me find out if Fauquier County had been sued before for accidents, because a lot of people say it costs too much money, but usually the money they pay out in lawsuits overrides the, um, the money that it would have costed to put seatbelts on school buses. Um, I haven't gotten any data yet, and, but I'm going to try to pursue that. There are lawyers advertising on the internet, school bus accident lawyers, so there are people seeking out um, people who have been injured, and again, the money outweighs what you would pay in lawsuits. So you may be thinking, Megan, we've heard this before. What new information can you bring us? So I, I do have information, new information this year. You may have heard of the unfortunate Chattanooga, Tennessee school bus accident that happened in November. Six children died. Um, over 30 kids were injured. The very next day, someone on the school board started um, it was a representative named Favors to write a bill to the legislature introducing seatbelts on school buses. Um, there's a quote say, stating, sometimes it takes a tragedy like this to get people to focus on it and realize the seriousness of it. And if that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. That was from Chattanooga. Um, also, I have collected a couple photos that I sent to Ginger, who's been so helpful to me, um, of our local school buses. So last year I was saying that my kids had, uh, were sitting three to a seat for a couple weeks and their bottoms couldn't fit on the seat, you know, because sometimes they don't have enough bus drivers. But if you had seat belts and everyone has a seat, um, also that I remember um, following my kids on a school bus trip last year to Winchester and the kids knew me that I was driving behind them and they were sitting backwards the whole time waving at Mrs. Fay. But it's not the fault of the bus driver because they, their focus is on the road. They can't keep looking. But if you have seatbelts, you don't have that happening. Um, also, I heard last year we got some, or maybe in the past year, we got some new buses without seatbelts. Um, the big news, the big news, the drum roll, is that in 2015, the National Transportation and Safety Administration is now advocating for seatbelts on every school bus. In my prior presentations, they didn't have a stand on it. They were doing studies and hemming and hawing. But now they have come out and made an announcement, and I have copies all over. There was um, a good piece. I was going to show a school bus um, piece from, the, um, from Tom Costello, the NBC News. So now they're advocating school bus, National Transportation Safety Administration, saying it's time for a change. This is a no-brainer, seatbelt school seatbelts on school buses save lives, and they have a quote saying, it's time to stop arguing about dollars and cents and cost-benefit ratio of whether it would make economic sense. Um, they, they're advocating no more rules or hearings or special interest groups. They're advocating a national-wide effort to achieve that goal of getting seatbelts on school buses by, by relying on community pressure to demand school districts to require seatbelts. Three-point seatbelts should be standard. So before, up until now, they were saying, we don't know, we don't know, but now they're saying, yes, seatbelts on school buses. Um, I watched, uh, I don't know if anybody watched the 60 Minutes a couple weeks ago, but there was an interesting piece on this politician named Renzi in Italy who was trying to change a political government. And he was saying about how Italy shouldn't be known for its history, Italy should be known for its future. And I was thinking, that's what I think about Fauquier County. We shouldn't rely on our history. We do have a good school bus record of low accidents, but we shouldn't rely on, rely on that 
and we should think about our future. Um, there's a quote, too, from uh, the family of one of the, the people who were injured that's very sad and about how they think of their daughter every day. Is my time up, Ginger? Okay, okay. Um, but I just wanted to say that there, that I will help do anything. I can get more signatures if you have any questions. But it just takes the, the brave person to start the ball rolling. And, and there are people in history who've made mounds and they knew they were going to have some flack from cost. But, but the kids are important. These, these kids who are sitting back there, I should say young adults, not kids, uh, sitting back there and all the people in the choir, um, we want to keep them safe, and if there's anything I can do to help, I'd like to help. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that was signed up? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we will move on to our reports. Uh, uh, school board members may report on their liaison activities and committee meetings. We also have the Building and Finance Committee meeting minutes with us. Um, I will start down with Mr. Mason. Um, I want to thank Liberty High School for partnering with Alpha Federal Credit Union and the, um, make the first step to have a credit union within the school here in the county. I think it's a great program. I've seen it for years in Prince William as a Apple user. Uh, I found it very useful when I was going to Potomac High School. I could do my banking and do my job all at the same time. <laughs> Ms. Grove? Um, yeah, it, as far as building minutes, I think pretty much um, everything is going along. i just bring you up to date on the Mary Walter issue with the um, DEQ and the septic system. They're, we're still working with DEQ, and hopefully by summer we'll have a, a remedy in place going to cost some money, but not necessarily for <coughs> not for sure who's going to pay. We're not. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, we were, a group of us went along to the Board of Supervisors meeting last week to help celebrate the 40 years of tremendous service from Dr. Mitchell, and um, I thought it was very nice. The Board of Supervisors read a resolution her honor, recognizing the great job that she has done for Fauquier County. And the middle school committee had its last meeting last week, a four, another four hour meeting. And um, those folks that are on that committee were dedicated. They hung in for four hours and were still asking questions at the end of four hours. They were. I mean, took their duty, as I said last time. They, they took it to heart, and they studied, and they read, and they hopefully came to the right conclusion. So that will be coming to the full board in January. Uh, Ms. Sloan? Oh, thank you to uh, Kettle Run High School and Greenville Elementary for uh, the wonderful day we had, Bring Your Legislator to School Day. Thank you, and Sarah Fry and others who organized that. What a great day. We had a chance to visit with fifth grade students in Mrs. Robertson's class and watch them build towers and compete, and there was such excitement and such learning in the classroom that day, and I, just the kids were having such a good time. It was a really fun day to be there. And then we had, um, uh, delicious food from the culinary students at Kettle Run High School. We got to visit with the cosmetology students. We got to visit with the iSTEM students and watch submarines and get to talk to all the students. And I quizzed students on sports and the green background. And they were, oh my gosh, what professionals. They all have plans, Mr. Warner, in case you don't know, um, to use what they've learned in those classes to take um, what they're gonna do in their next steps. Many of them are seniors and they were talking about the classes that they take at Kettle Run and how it will help them prepare for college. So it was a lovely day with them. And also, who did I miss, the um, graphic arts, the imaging. Um, but we had a wonderful time visiting. We got to uh, see Michael Webert and Scott Ligenfelter, and I think they really enjoyed the day, and thank you very much for inviting us. Um, you know, I was gonna say this at the last school board meeting, but you know, I thought it might be a little too soon, a little too raw. You know, we, we did have an election and now it's been, gosh, it's been a whole month, so maybe people are in a, in a more peaceful mood, but 
we have to say congratulations to Donald Mason for the school board. Hi, you thought I was going somewhere else, didn't you all? I could see Ginger going, what are you doing? Um, but we didn't say congratulations after the election, and I know we all did separately, but formally Donald Mason <laughs> elected to the school board, so thank you. <laughs> congratulations to you. I'm all good. Thank you. You're done? I am. Well, I was going to talk about the take your legislators to lunch, to a school uh -huh. event, but you've taken care of that part of it. But I will like to offer an update of the most recent Department of Education a uh, full site evaluation of the Mountain Vistas Governor School. Are there any Mountain Vistas Governor School students here? If, if you are, please raise your hand. Any out there? Folks, back in um, October, um, we hosted uh, a number of uh, evaluators uh, from the Virginia Department of Education uh, for uh, a thorough, thorough examination of our Governor's School. And today, just today, I received the final draft. Uh, you have a copy of that draft in front of you. I ask that you take it home and at your leisure uh, go over it uh, because um, January work session, I've already asked Dr. Williamson uh, to come to the work session and present this in detail and to give all of you all a chance to comment and um, ask questions. What I would like to do is just to read the cover letter that accompanied these results. First of all, there were 62 components that we were judged on. 60 out of 62 components were either rated met, uh, meet um, requirements or exceed requirements. 60 out of 62, with the majority being exceeds requirements. There were two minor recommendations uh, that the board uh, noted, uh, and we will uh, look at that and, and address that uh, in our work session. But I would like to just to read uh, the cover letter that accompanied this, uh, this feedback. And it's from the Virginia Department of Education. <clears throat> it says, Dear Dr. Wimson, on behalf of the members, please accept the Virginia Department of Education's gratitude for hosting the committee for the October 2016 full site evaluation of the Mountain Business Governor School. The team agreed overwhelmingly that you and your staff, board, students, and parents were gracious hosts. They appreciated the preparation and schedule made by the instructional staff, which allowed them to learn a lot about the school in a relatively short period of time. The team documented the growth that has been made during this 20, year of 20 years of operation. The respect with which the program is viewed within the service area is well deserved. The team was impressed with the advanced opportunities in many fields that Mountain Vistas Governor School offers students here in the region. Please accept this report and my congratulations on behalf of the committee. Please convey the team's gratitude and appreciation to your faculty, staff, administrators, school boards, students, and their parents. So folks, I am extremely, extremely proud of the Mountain Vistas Governor School, the, evalu the evaluation and the evaluation process. And once you get into this report and read it in detail, uh, you will all know exactly or feel exactly you know, why we do this and how we do this. And also, Dr. Mitchell, uh, we owe a lot of the, the success to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Jack? Uh, just this should have been in, um, included in the announcements, but the school support council meeting is actually Wednesday. It was rescheduled to this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Okay. Um, I will only say that um, been monitoring and hearing from people about SOLs. You see the computers in front of you that time of at least this semester um, and the presentation we had at Kettle Run High School two weeks ago um, continue to reinforce to our legislators who were there the importance of continuing to look at how we do testing how we do education and that this system doesn't always work for students for all students so the more and more you can continue to keep up on what's going on with SOLs and tie that to real 
uh, educational um, and career advancement. Um, you know, please continue to do that as a community. We're going to need your support and the support of everybody here if we're going to continue to change things. Thank you. Um, we will now hear the financial management report from Righteous Brother. <laughs> Mr. Shrestha. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Jack. Happy holidays. This is a summary of our school division's financial health as of October 31st, 2016. Uh, as you know, we didn't have a finance committee meeting this month because of a very important event and um, beginning with the summary our school operating fund which is our main fund we are tracking uh, approximately to where we were this time last year at 31 percent in um, expenditures all the other funds are in a positive balance uh, I do want to mention about food nutrition uh, that one is, uh, is tracking slightly behind in terms of uh, revenues are slightly less than expenditures. We, we will discuss it in finance committee next month. We haven't um, been asked to mark it yellow by the committee members yet, but it's one that we always track and uh, that one will improve or not improve based on a variety of reasons like snow days and that sort of thing. So we'll keep an eye on that. And that's all I have for you this evening. Uh, I just want to let you know one last thing. We are expecting the governor's announcement on the budget on the 16th. And uh, what I look for is the worksheet that comes behind it with the details, not just the, um, you know, the words. That sometimes tracks a, little, a few days behind. But as soon as I get that information, you guys will receive an update. Okay? Yes, Can, sir. Are we still on track with some of the adjustments we're making on the budget calendar? I mean, we talked about those no changes in the past few weeks to what we're expecting. Right. I think we are. Uh, we, we basically, I think we set up a, a, a several of those dates. Um, and I have updated the dates on the uh, website yeah. based on our last meeting for citizens to be able to see. And it was discussed in the last meeting. And I can bring also an updated uh, calendar to our next finance uh, committee meeting, which will be in January. So any citizens that come to that will have a copy for Thank that. you. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Ms. Downs with the Human Resources Report. <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the school board, Dr. Jack. This evening, um, this, the Human Resources reports that we have 10 certified positions open. We have 11 classified positions. Currently, we are... Um, looking at opportunities to hire bus drivers. We are in great need. Um, recently, Dr. Dan Phillips attended uh, mock interviews at University of Mary Washington where we're partnering to get graduates, as well as um, he attended the um, SASPA conference and job fair, which was also an excellent opportunity to meet um, December grads. We are still visiting Quantico on a bi-weekly basis and hoping to get the transitioning military to fill um, positions that could be open and fit their needs. We are doing a job fair January 24th in the new year, hopefully to recruit bus drivers on the spot and to make some offers. And our annual teacher fair is scheduled for March 18th, 2017, and um, we hope to get some great hires so we'll be able to fill positions early. Any questions this evening? Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion on our consent agenda. I'll move that the school board approve the minutes from the October 5th special school board meeting and work session, the November 14th school board meeting, and the November 28th school board meeting and work session, the monthly bills and payroll, revision of policy 3-3.5 purchasing, the revision of policies 5-1.1.5 personnel records and 5-9.4 whistleblower protection, the new high school courses and the personnel actions which include the following, the um, 
new and newly hired which include one teacher one instructional assistant and two custodians the resignation of one bus driver and one school nutrition employee and the retirement of one bus driver second all right we have a motion and a second on the consent agenda which includes minutes from the october 5th spe special school board meeting and work session november 14th school board meeting and november 28th school board meeting and work session monthly bills and payroll revision of policy 3-3.5 which is in purchasing revision of policies 5-1.5 personnel records and 5-9.4 whistleblower protection uh, new high school courses and personnel actions which include the following new and newly hired one teacher one instructional assistant and two custodians resignation of one bus driver and one school nutrition employee and the retirement of one bus driver any discussion uh, the only thing I have to say is with the approval of those new classes it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go in I had some questions about that does that mean we're now funding all of those classes no that's based on availability of resources to do so all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The motion passes. Thank you very much. We will now move to action items. Mr. Chairman, I move that the school board approve the school improvement plans as presented at the November 28th school board meeting for Pearson, Pierce, and Walter Elementary Schools. Second. Motion is second that the school board approve the school improvement plans as presented at the November 28th school board meeting for Pearson, Pierce, and Walter Elementary Schools. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed, no. The motion passes. Mr. Chair, I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to enter into a telecommunications master marketing agreement with Milestone Development Incorporated to market school division properties for the purpose of erecting telecommunications uh, monopoles and leasing space on the monopoles to telecommunications service providers. There's been a motion and a second that the school board authorize the superintendent to enter into a telecommunications master marketing agreement with Milestone Development Incorporated to market school division properties for the purpose of erecting telecommunication monopoles and leasing space on the monopoles to telecommunications service providers. Any discussion? Yay. Yay. Finally. Yay. Yeah. Great job on this with legal as well. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The motion passes. And I think we should go out here. Uh, at this time, uh, Dr. S Sandra Mitchell is going to be invited to the front to hear uh, something from us and to be recognized for your. 40 years of service to Fauquier County Public Schools. Thank you. And why don't we join up here? Ooh, we have 40 items in here that you might <laughs> like. <laughs> They're all goodies from our friends at the Town Duck in Warrenton, and they hand selected some things that they think you'll really like. Um, the basket is all in here, and I would pull it out, but there are some things Ginger might not like us to have. It's <laughs> so if you oh, would yeah. hold it uh, <laughs> open and at no, your leisure, okay. and please hold the bottom. Or Dr. Martin's yeah. Yeah. presentation. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll set Thank that you. here. It's heavy. Thank you so much. Pick that up. It's 40 different chutneys from Town Duck. <laughs> Didn't know that you could make so many. Thank you all so much. And my mom always said you should read the card first, right, before you open the gift. But <laughs> we're going to uh, now read a resolution uh, from the Fauquier County Public Schools and the school board on your behalf. So, <clears throat> whereas. So Fauquier County Public Schools, recognizing the service of Dr. Sandra Mitchell. This is our resolution. Whereas Dr. Sandra Mitchell has served Fauquier County Public Schools for 40 years, leading first her students as an English teacher at Cedar Lee Middle School, then her colleagues as English supervisor, and finally 
all instructional employees of Fauquier County Public Schools as Associate Superintendent for Instruction. And whereas Dr. Mitchell spearheaded and developed many opportunities for instructional employees of Fauquier County Public Schools to participate in professional development, instructional coaching, and leadership development and training. And whereas Dr. Mitchell served the children of Fauquier County Public Schools and the community with a genuine fervor to improve the education of every child developing and implementing several programs such as an advanced placement potential program to raise academic expectations and increase advanced placement enrollment and whereas dr mitchell increased and ensured parity and access for each and every student through the expansion of various programs including a freshman transition program an academic coaching program and a residential camp for a targeted group of rising fifth graders who needed an academic boost and there's a lot of me Whereas Dr. Mitchell served as an acting superintendent from January 4th, 2013 through May 13th, 2013, undertaking challenges such as middle school programming, middle school redistricting, principal vacancies, and the fiscal year 2014 budget. You could do it. And whereas Dr. Mitchell's numerous contributions to the Fauquier County Public Schools have resulted in a school division that inspires students and teachers alike. And whereas Dr. Mitchell's colleagues not only admire and respect her leadership, hard work, commitment, and kindness, but also consider her a friend and now therefore be it resolved that by the Fauquier County School Board on this 12th day of December in the year of 2016, that the Fauquier County Pub School Board recognizes with sincere appreciation and gratitude Dr. Mitchell's service to Fauquier County Public Schools and be it resolved further that the school board wishes Dr. Mitchell the best in her future endeavors. I just want to thank the board for this. Um, our senior staff, our instructional supervisors, all of us, we say very often that we are so fortunate to have a board like you. You all, you support us, um, you ask us good questions, you ask us the hard questions, but you have faith in us and we, we really do, a, we can't tell you how appreciative of, I'm, I'm kind of a sick person. I listen to other school board meetings when I travel. I know people think that's crazy, but I do. We are lucky and Dr. <laughs> Dr. Jack, we say that all the time, and I just want to thank you so much for your support of us, all of us, um, for what you have done and for this for me. Thank you so much. And with that, we have no more business to come. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody.